Hello and welcome to the Workforce Development Council update. My name is Katie Ralston and I serve as the Workforce Director for the North Dakota Department of Commerce. And in my role, I have the great privilege of working closely with the Workforce Development Council. Thank you for joining as we share some opportunities about the Council and to introduce our speaker, excuse me, uh, to share the opportunities we've identified to address some of the state's workforce needs. To share some information about the Council and to introduce our speakers today is Dave Farnsworth, Manager of Power Generation and Engineering for Great River Energy and Chair of the Workforce Development Council. Welcome, Dave. Thank you, Katie, and for this introduction. And as a Chair of the North Dakota Workforce Development Council, I'm pleased to have our Council present to you 13 recommendations and two endorsements that the Council feels can really help to address the greatest workforce challenges that face North Dakota today and in the coming years. These recommendations are built upon the Council's uh, October 2018 report and they further home in on specific actions and try to prioritize those things that we believe will have the biggest impact on, him, on addressing our workforce needs. Uh, first of all, the, the Workforce Development Council, for those of you who are not familiar with it, is a, uh, is a council that is used to do a couple of things. One is it's to advise the governor and the public concerning the nature and extent of what the workforce needs are in North Dakota. The second is to go ahead and optimize the resources that we have available, both federal, state, and, uh, and, and private, to go ahead and, uh, and uh, optimize our opportunities and to minimize any uh, unnecessary duplication of effort. The Workforce Development Council, uh, by requirement, requires that over 50% of the council members uh, be part of the private sector. So the, uh, so the constituencies that we have or those who are represented on the council we involve private industry and we have um, many of the key industries in North Dakota. We have energy manufacturing, we have value added ag, we have suppliers, healthcare, information technology to name a few who are uh, representatives of private industry key forces within the state uh, that are on this council. In addition to that, we have organized labor. We have three representatives who are with organized labor on the council. And then we have higher, we have education, both K through 12, which is critical. We'll talk a little bit about that on some of our, uh, where, how, some of our recommendations. And we also have higher ed uh, on, the, uh, on the council. Uh, in addition to that, we do have a couple of, uh, we have a couple of legislative members. We have Senator Randy Burkhardt out of Minot, and we have Representative uh, Cindy Schreiber-Beck out of Richland County, who are also uh, on the council to help provide some legislative sort of uh, in, uh, input and, and very helpful advice uh, on the council for workforce matters. And then finally, we have the uh, various state workforce representatives. So these would be key organizations within state government that are involved in, uh, in workforce and such as career and technical education, job service, vocational rehab, commerce, and, uh, and, uh, and others. And so we have a very robust and, uh, and comprehensive group that is really passionate about addressing workforce needs within North Dakota and we believe uh, these uh, recommendations are um, some that uh, really represent a, a very comprehensive view of where we as the state should go. So uh, with that, in, uh, in this short online event we're gonna have today, I'd, we have several of our, of our council members who will be presenting our workforce recommendations and uh, endorsements and uh, so we've prioritized these many actions and, and data and all these things we've been uh, discussing and, and, uh, and recommending and boiled them down to four major categories. And um, I'm just gonna introduce the, what they are and who's gonna present them, and then I'll turn it over to them. First of all, we have uh, the first presentation is gonna be given by Don Schilling, 
He's the chair of general equipment and suppliers in Fargo, and he's going to present four recommendations and an endorsement revolving around the earlier and more diverse career exploration and addressing the technical skills gap. After Don is completed, we'll have Brian Clipful, who's the executive director of Job Service North Dakota, who will discuss what efforts can be done to help remove barriers to employment. And um, this is to help fill these critical workforce needs that we have in North Dakota. And the council has chosen uh, specifically three recommendations that are going to help integrate ex-offenders back into society and to help reduce recidivism by helping them enter re-enter the workforce. Uh, Katie Ralston, who you've already met here, she's the workforce director for the Department of Commerce. She'll detail the efforts that are already underway and can be used to further uh, or in, in other efforts that can further uh, forward occupational license reform. This will help to streamline the process and ease the ability to attract qualified licensed individuals to work in the state of North Dakota. Katie will detail four recommendations that are being promoted by the council. And then our final presentation will be given by Pat Bertinelli, and uh, he's a council member who uh, has spent quite a bit of time up in the oil field, and he's uh, he'll be coming out of the uh, Rough Rider Center up in Watford City. Pat's going to discuss two recommendations and one endorsement that the council believes will really enhance the efforts for recruiting and retaining employees, uh, new workers in the state. And um, I would like to uh, turn now things over to Don to go ahead and uh, talk about uh, career exploration and technical skills gap. Go ahead, Don. Uh, thank you, Dave, and good morning. Uh, over the past several years, the Workforce Development Council has been focused on finding and filling high demand jobs and addressing our uh, technical skills gap. The pandemic shined even a brighter light on what we already knew, that North Dakota high demand careers exploration with our youth is critical, especially in a time when face-to-face -face career fairs or job internships and job shadows are very limited. Many of our youth are missing out on meaningful career exploration activities. North Dakota has an opportunity and a necessity to become a leader in engaging youth early and creating uh, a consistent and integrated approach to career exploration and skill development with a tighter alignment of the North Dakota educational system, that would be K through 12, CTE, and the North Dakota University system, and investment by the private sectors. We must also attract and engage our existing underskilled workforce. I have four recommendations in our endorsement to review with you today. The council recommends the expansion of our career and technical education centers with the $45 million investment that was proposed in the governor's budget. The creation of CTE centers is a, in multiple school districts through a competitive grant process that demonstrates commitment, ensuring success through industry alignment and private sector match. This is our priority and a major opportunity to address the skills gap. Through these CTE centers, we would serve K-12 youth during the school hours and would serve to upskill our existing workforce in hours of operations that would be convenient for those seeking career improvement opportunities. These CTE programs will be delivered by both virtual venues and combined with on-site hands-on training processes. We can show our kids what these careers really look like. By expanding our CTE offerings and methods of delivery, we can truly begin to fill high demand jobs currently available in North Dakota, as well as react to North Dakota's future needs. The next three recommendations I'm going to cover fit hand in glove with what the Workforce Development Council sees as critical need. 
The council recommends that the North Dakota Department of Career and Technical Education and the Department of Public Instruction work collaboratively to promote and encourage increased opportunities for career exploration in our schools. Resources can be provided to the schools to better inform them of North Dakota career opportunities. Schools would be encouraged to provide career exploration experiences that work best for them, perhaps delivered in homeroom type uh, venues where career discussion and you can be unique and open. The council also recommends utilizing and expanding existing industry unit in the North Dakota Studies curriculum to include multiple high demand industries and career opportunities within the state. The council also recommends development of a grant program to support the private sector in creating virtual examples such as videos and virtual reality experiences of high demand careers currently available in North Dakota and to util be utilized by educators and students throughout the state. By coupling these three recommendations together, we can see our educational systems delivering more robust and comprehensive North Dakota career exploration experiences for our youth. Finally, the council endorses the utilization of North Dakota Career Builders funds to promote a program to stakeholders, including businesses and employees, students, parents, and educators. Created through 2019 North Dakota Legislative Assembly, H Bill HB 1171, North Dakota Career Builder, is a skilled workforce scholarship and student repayment program aimed at attracting, attracting people to high need and emerging occupations in the state. This program is administered through the North Dakota University system. Through 2000 and December of 2020, however, only about one tenth of the dollars available for this program have been committed. We must do a better job of marketing and marketing these programs, not only to our youth, but to private sector employers. These programs require partnering of a student and a potential employer and is critical for its success. Thank you for listening to my section. I will now turn this over to Brian Klepfeld, the Director of Job Service in North Dakota. Uh, thank you, Don. Uh, a, lot, a lot of good stuff going on with all our committees. Uh, uh, in 2018, the Workforce Development Council identified populations with barriers as a keen theme to solving workforce challenges across North Dakota. Now, we've had a, a, a subcommittee of the Workforce Development Council uh, dealing with the populations with barriers. And there, there are a lot of different barriers out there, anything from homelessness to addiction to, uh, there's just a whole list of, of uh, different things that you can consider. We looked at uh, ex-offenders and ex-offenders were identified as one such population to experience barriers to entering the workforce including the lifelong impact of criminal conviction on their record. Uh, just a few statistics for, uh, for 2020. So there were 1,600 prison releases uh, approximately each year. Okay, without a steady paycheck, allowing the basic needs to be met, such as housing and food, many ex-offenders returned to the prisons. Recidivism rate of 40.3% in 2020. Reducing recidivism is a, is a public imperative and DRC Department of Corrections Rehabilitation has seen this number reduced when the population participates in both education and work experience in preparation for obtaining gainful employment upon release. Uh, the employment rate in, at the end of October was 4.4% in the state. And uh, you know, with, with this pandemic, we, we were one of the lowest uh, unemployment uh, rate states in the, in the nation. And uh, the, 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 through the COVID-19 has impacted workforce statewide, low unemployment remains a challenge. And still, even with, the, with this COVID and all the things that have, uh, have slowed down you know, with the economy, 
there are still over 13,000 job openings with in-demand jobs in skilled trades, transportation, IT, and a wide variety of other industries. And we, our, our committee and Workforce Development Council endorses ex-offenders are a target group to fill these in-demand positions. The Workforce Development Council is recommending a three-tiered approach to create a pathway to successful transition of ex-offenders into our communities to improve employment and drive economic efficiency. The first tier is a job placement pilot program. And this is a collaborative effort between Job Service North Dakota, DOCR, the F5 project, and employers with a goal to to place recently soon release ex-offenders into in-demand positions in North Dakota. Job Service North Dakota works uh, directly with DOCR and, and F5 to identify employers and participants. Supplemental to existing service under WIOA. This is a federal grant that uh, through Job Service that uh, serves the, uh, the less privileged. And so there are some federal dollars for this type of program. And there's also uh, governor set aside dollars through the WEO program that we'll be using to fund this also. We will serve an addition, uh, additional 40 participants per year in both Fargo and Bismarck. So we're, we're looking at 40 per year, so a total of 80 in the biennium. And when you look at uh, 1600 prisoner releases each year, this is a relatively small pilot project, but we, start, we figured we start small. And if this is successful, we can always expand later on. Using available VO funds and set aside funds, the program offers an employee incentive by matching 50% of the participant's salary for up to six months. So if a business hires this, uh, this ex-offender, they, they, we, we can match the salary up to 50% for six months. And additional support may be available for items such as transportation tools or equipment. And additional incentive for employees include up to a $25,000 in fidelity bonds for hiring ex-offenders in this case something happens. So that's the first tier. The second tier is a, is a kind of a certificate program. And again, this is a partnership with Job Service North Dakota, DOCR, and the Workforce, and Workforce Development Council. Utilizing the framework existing under the Pro Board, uh, participants, including ex-offenders participating on the job pace, placement pilot, as well as ex-offenders preparing, preparing for parole. This allows the opportunity to apply for a certificate to demonstrate rehabilitation and work readiness in becoming a contributing member of society. And the thing to remember, this program does not remove any convictions from the record. So the, the process would be with the uh, with the Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation. They have a lot of great training programs with Rough Rider Industry. They have a great uh, education program for GEDs and other, other things that uh, we can get some trained, skilled workforce out of there. And so if, if there is an inmate that is, uh, or is ready for parole, the, uh, the, the uh, parole probation Usually it does a background check to make sure that this person will be ready. And including in this background check that will go to the pro board will be a readiness for employment. And uh, so that would be kind of an endorsement to say that, yeah, this person has participated in all the training programs they can and is a good employee and will be a, will it be a good, good fit for a, a, an organization. And so it would be, a, you know, it's, it's a, Good program. There's a lot of well-trained individual ex-offenders that, that come out, and uh, hopefully we can get them placed in the job market so that we can uh, find have them be a productive member of society. And this is not only a good program; it's really the right thing to do. I mean, it's, it, we really need to help uh, get uh, get those ex-offenders employed, and then plus it will help the uh, job market in, in uh, North Dakota. So then our third tier will be kind of a marketing campaign. And, and what we're doing now is probably pretty much a kind of a marketing campaign. We're going to utilize existing statewide commission networks such as North Dakota Sherm, Chambers, and, and Job Service North Dakota Business Advisors. Uh, so we will, uh, Job Service North Dakota, Commerce, DOCR, and that five project will collaborate to wrap around and promote their programs to employers. 
Now, some of this uh, marketing, you know, would in, would include, uh, you know, maybe some testimonials from some businesses that have uh, that have hired ex offenders, and uh, and and again, just to let them know that these individuals are 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 trained and ready to be in the workforce and and ready to rehabilitate. Uh, the focus of the campaign will be education about hiring uh, sex offenders, including testimonials from ex offenders about the impact of being given a second chance and employers that benefit from hiring ex offenders. So it's, a, it's not just hiring sex offenders, all, hiring all offenders, but really to make sure that we have a, a, a workforce to, to choose from. And uh, that's, uh, you know, that's probably what the, the main focus of this program would be. Uh, so, uh, you know, there's uh, going to be, you know, just basically the funding that I talked about for this program. Uh, really no general fund dollars, which we know with this legislative session may be a little bit more difficult, but we are going to use uh, some uh, we owe funding both uh, from job service and from the governor's set aside of about 650,000. For that, we're going to be using to hire, you know, a couple of case workers to work with these individuals, these adult workers, and, uh, and hopefully, you know, the Workforce Development Council will, will approve the set aside for this purpose. And uh, no additional funding is really needed, uh, you know. And uh, there might be some statutory changes to to Northwest Century Code, which we will work on. And then, like I say, the marketing is just kind of what we're doing now, and we will continue to uh, to do that and promote this uh, these uh, these good trained workers to get in help out in the workforce. So, thank you. And now I'll turn it back over to Katie. Great, thank you, Brian. All right. In North Dakota, there are over 80 licensed occupations by 50 boards, agencies, and commissions. During the 66th Legislative Assembly, Senate Bill 2306 was passed to promote license reciprocity for military spouses. The bill also granted the Department of Commerce the ability to request a report from the boards and commissions included in this bill. This opportunity allowed us to further leverage an occupational licensing review and reform grant the U.S. Department of, of Labor awarded the state in July 2018. In partnership with the subcommittee of the Workforce Development Council, made up of legislators and a cross-functional group of representatives of those affected by North Dakota's occupational licensing framework, including business and representatives of populations with barriers, such as uh, folks with criminal backgrounds, military, and people who are re-entering the workforce. These funds were utilized to research North Dakota's schema for occupational licensing, to develop a thorough understanding of licensing in our state, discover best practices, engage licensing boards and commissions, and identify the best path for reform with the goal of removing unnecessary barriers to employment while preserving the health and safety of North Dakotans and promoting competition. Over the course of eight months, this subcommittee learned from subject matter experts from the National Conference of State Legislatures and the Council of State Governments, in addition to the research team from the Council on Licensure Enforcement and Regulation, or CLEAR, who led the data collection process with North Dakota's licensing boards and commissions. Through this work, some of the interesting things we found were that we have fewer boards than we realized. We pre through a previous study, we believed we had 61 licensing boards. However, through our work with CLEAR, we identified some duplication from that, that last study and were able to eliminate 11 boards. We now know that we have 50 licensing boards and commissions. We also learned about a practice that has been widely adopted by our licensing boards, which we found out is unique and has created efficiencies in expediting application processing. 30% of our boards empower a designated board member to approve routine license applications, and 61% of boards delegated that authority to a staff member to approve routine license applications. Related to geographic mobility, we learned that many of our boards have all, already have practices in place to accommodate out-of-state applicants. 41% of our boards have informal policies in place to expedite applications for out-of-state applicants or to recognize out-of-state licenses. 20% have formal reciprocity agreements with other states. 
and 41% have endorsement provisions for out-of-state applicants. North Dakota also belongs to interstate compacts for teachers, physicians, nurses, physical therapists, and emergency medical service personnel. We also asked for about board's compliance with the military spouse reciprocity bill, which was designed to make it easier for military spouses to get licensed to practice through expedited application processing or the issuance of a provisional license or temporary permit if an application cannot be processed within that 30 day timeframe. Since this bill was passed in 2019, and at the time of this survey in the spring of 2020, we learned that 58 applicants identified themselves as a military spouse, and only one was issued a provisional license. We are encouraged by the success of this bill and see more opportunities emerging to serve this population. The council has identified the following opportunities to remove unnecessary barriers to licensed employment while preserving the health and safety of North Dakota citizens. The council recommends removing vague or generic terms, including without limitation, the phrase moral turpitude and good character from licensing board policies, as this language may be interpreted subjectively when processing license applications. The council also recommends establishing and making public specific criminal convictions that will disqualify an applicant from obtaining a license to practice and implementing a pre-qualification process for applicants who have a criminal conviction on their record in order to prevent the unnecessary expense of training and testing if a specific past conviction will disqualify the applicant from receiving a license to practice in North Dakota. Next, the Council recommends establishing an ongoing system for data collection from licensing boards, commissions, and agencies so future reform efforts can be specific to evolving needs, barriers, and opportunities. This will require a designated office or agency to identify data points and gather these annual reports. Finally, the Council recommends clearly defining who qualifies as a military spouse or dependent and including military personnel under the provisions of the Military Spouse Licensure Reciprocity Bill, Senate Bill 2306, that was passed by the 66th Legislative Assembly. That completes the Council's recommendations on occupational licensing reform. At this time, I'll turn it over to Pat Bertinoli to round out our update today. Thank you, Katie, and good morning, everyone. I have the honor of representing our Workforce Council Recruit and Retain Subcommittee, and on their behalf, we thank you for your time today. North Dakota businesses seek qualified candidates, people with the skills, training, and talent necessary to perform specific jobs. In short, with over 13,000 jobs currently available in our state, we need more qualified workers. While this need spans across all geographies and industries, North Dakota has specific and acute needs for those with technical skills. I want to share our inspiration behind this next recommendation. We all know that there is something very special about our state and the people of North Dakota. Over the past several months through the Department of Commerce Technical Skills Training Grant Program, we witnessed and were completely encouraged by the creativity and innovation of the many people and organizations who quickly found ways to adapt to changing conditions and facilitate the much needed accelerated skills development and job placement of workers, many of whom had been initially displaced by recent events. As a result of the program's success, the Council recommends sustaining the Technical Skills Training Grant Program, thus providing matching dollars to help training providers further develop and or expand accelerated skilled workforce training programs in targeted industries and in-demand occupations. The Council encourages leveraging TrainND as a key partner in providing training programs under the grant by earmarking, earmarking a portion of funding for TrainND sites in addition to reserving a portion of funding for programs led by the private sector and other training providers. The Council endorses the current funding allocation for TrainND as determined in the Department of Career and Technical Education budget for the upcoming biennium. I believe it's important to note that statewide TrainND has earned over a 95% level of satisfaction ranking from employers and those receiving training, recognizing not only their training, but also their responsiveness to the training needs of today and tomorrow. Finally, the Council recognizes that as North Dakota continues to recover from the economic effects of the COVID-19 pandemic, we know that we will likely find ourselves with more available jobs than workers to fill them. 
We approach this challenge from a position of strength, knowing that people from across the nation, given the turbulence of 2020, will be seeking opportunities for a fresh start. Just last week, Matt Walker, a credit strategist and contributing editor for badcredit.org, featured North Dakota in a blog titled, Career Opportunities, Recognizing North Dakota as a Top State for Reducing Debt. Matt's mission is to bring financial literacy to his readers, which number in the millions. We certainly understand that we have our own set of problems in North Dakota, but we also see our opening to recruit top talent to our state. As a result, to support our industries with our state's highest in-demand jobs, the council recommends investing in a targeted workforce recruitment campaign to support our industries in recruiting and attracting new workers to our state. Thank you for your time today. I will now turn it back to Dave for closing comments. Thanks, Pat. Uh, thanks to all of you out there who have joined us today and are allowing the Workforce Development Council to introduce to you a number of critical workforce opportunities, which we believe will help meet the, the critical workforce needs in the state, both today and in the future. We see a bright future for the economy and the quality of life for the citizens of North Dakota. If we could just rise to meet the challenge of workforce needs that currently face us. Feel free to share this online event. It's been recorded and uh, can be found on the Commerce website, which we've listed here, commerce.nd.gov slash workforce. Uh, you can share that with your organizations or individuals that may be interested. Also, if you have any specific questions, please feel free to contact Katie Ralston. We've listed her email here, keralston at nd.gov. Or you can contact uh, myself, Dave Farnsworth at dfarnsworth at grenergy.com. Thank you very much for your attendance and uh, uh, we look forward to working with you. Bye now. <laughs>